Hello. We like good redemption stories. And there's so many in popular culture and literature. Just for example, I'm sure almost everybody loves the part when in Star Wars, Darth Vader turns against the Emperor and the Dark Force to save his son, Luke Skywalker. Those kind of stories gives us the impression there's some order in the universe. There's some sort of justice in our society. And more importantly, there's hope for the worst people. There's hope for all of us. We can find that sort of reassurance in the United Church document, A Song of Faith, that says evil does not, cannot undermine or overcome love of God. Well, in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 9, we have the story of what it's called the conversion of Paul on the road to Damascus. At this point, Paul is still known as Saul. He's an important Pharisee, he's a Roman citizen, spoke many languages, he's someone important, would say a big shot, he has a lot of privilege, a lot of influence, a lot of authority, and he could enjoy his position and all the benefit that comes with it. Instead, for some reason, he was annoyed by this fairly small group called the followers of the way made by Jesus disciple and once again we have to remind ourselves that up to this point Jesus disciple were still considered themselves Jews so there 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 is one Jews chasing other Jews it's feel like a, a family quarrel but um, there was no small quarrel. Paul was as this zeal to eradicate this group to the point of entering houses after houses, dragging both men and women and committed them to prison. So on the road to Damascus, this we can call him a villain of the story, he fit the characteristics had a life-changing experience. He felt the presence of Christ in a very spectacular way, a powerful light. And all of this changed him. And from this moment, he became a completely new man, adopted a new name. The man that was so, so keen to exclude people who did not believe or worship the right way, used the rest of his time to include people. Men, women, children, slave, free, Greek, Jews, all were welcome, all have their place, according to Paul. And today, when we look at this story, we look at their society, also, and we see politicians using wedge politics. We see people always looking for others to blame, the blame for their own problems. We see the polarization between the us and the, the them, those people we sometimes hear. Well, Paul's experience cannot be more relevant. This man who has this attitude of my way or the highway, or in this case, the, not the highway, the present. This man who was sure 100% to be right and the other were completely wrong. Well, he devoted the rest of his life to actively reach out to people who were different than him, to talking to them, try to build on common ground, 
try to build something new, new communities, new way of being. And since then, this is our call as Christian. And I know too many Christian, I forgot that. Too many Christian believe that it's their way of understanding faith and everybody else is wrong. Everybody else is doomed. They're sinners. But their call, since Paul's work, is not to divide. It's to unite. It's not to exclude, but to include. It's not to reject, but offering God's love to all. And it means to be able to be un humble enough to say, maybe I still have something to learn from the people I will meet today, regardless if they agree or disagree with me. And that's the great gift of this story, this great redemption story, that we still have a chance to make it right, to let all our mistakes behind and build something that will be inclusive, that will be uniting, that will be according God's dream for humanity. Once again, thank you for watching. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself. And bye-bye.